I see you clearly, so when one of you wants to talk, like, it's not that hard to see if you've got yeah, something pretty good. pretty damn good job of not interrupting each other, I gotta say. I agree. Well, that's that's what brings us to our next subject, which uh, do you want me to <laughs> oh. lead it, Pablo, or do you want to yeah, lead Yeah, no, it's my show, but uh, this one I actually want to give you custody of. Okay, I just loved so much. I really did. That uh, that Skip Bayless in now feuding in his 70s to try and take the mantle from industry sports leader Stephen A. Smith. 20 years, they've dominated debate culture and really changed the face of the sports media critic and, in debating everything, created an acid of cruelty around the way we treat athletes because it's all entertainment and we say nasty things and it's all sports radio and it's all supposed to be content. And Skip Bayless is trying to keep up with changing times in his 70s by opening the gates of hell to three <laughs> generations, three generations of this is the loudest black guy who played football during his generation. Three generations of it. Michael Irvin, Keyshawn Johnson, and Richard Sherman. And of course, when they get together, because they all want to be thrown the damn ball, all of them are talking at the same time, and Skip Bayless shrinks to the size of a postage stamp on his own show, because how the hell are you going to get in the way of those three personalities? And I'm just really enjoying the idea that Skip Bayless's last evolution is, all right, bleep it. Let's let everyone have at it on my show. I'm going to allow Richard Sherman, Michael Irvin, and Keyshawn Johnson to debate me for the remainder of my career. That again, I will say, I don't mean this as ageism. He's 70 years old. This is not... This is not the game for 70-year-olds, but he's going to try it with three different really cartoonish loud guys. We need to play a sample of this because Dan poetically described it, but we should just snort this. Learn to catch this ball in your body. Yeah. So, so in your hands, you tighten up, ball goes through you. Or you tighten up, ball That's hits the, the ground. That's the worst advice so, I've so, ever so, heard so, from so a receiver. Now. Don't catch it with your hands. Catch it with your body. How are you going to tell it? me that's the worst and, advice? I'm playing only one of the best to ever do it at playing that what game. What I'm saying I, is, you, well, I don't know how you, you can tell me you catch it with your body and, and not your hands. Once. It led to championships on every level. What I'm talking about doing, I want championships on every level doing. I don't know how you're going to say that bad advice. How is that bad advice? I mean, you'll notice zero words spoken by Skip Bayless in what is actually a representative clip from the many clips we had to choose from. You know the um, Christmas episode of The Bear? The Feast of the Fishes? Don't throw that fork. Watching these clips, that's how I feel. Uh, there's so many questions that come out of this. One is, yeah, do you think Skip Bayless feels like he's made the right decision consigning himself to the life that Dan described? Second is, is this good television? Uh, that I think is interesting because, you know, Dan, I've seen some of your criticisms of debate shows and debate culture, and I think that there's um, the thing that I find very hard to parse personally is well is is this good television is it good good television or bad television? what makes good and bad television in the argument format the ratings kind of speak for themselves with some of these shows that i feel like though hits a wall where it's not good for for me personally like i cannot i find that unwatchable i find it it's very challenging uh for me to listen to and it's very different from I guess I'll weigh in here with the personal experience first take, which I do uh, during the NFL season, because that show is very much Stephen A. Smith's show. That does not happen on that show. It, there's like, um, you go into the arena knowing that you, you're being incentivized to attack, but there's limits to it, you know? There, it, the, the, it's very clear who the boss is. <laughs> and then the, you know, Wait a minute, hold a on, Dan. Dan, are you hearing what I'm hearing on this? I mean, it's, she's, not speaking, saying, she's not speaking between the lines. That wouldn't happen on Stephen A. Smith's show. But also what wouldn't happen is he wouldn't have three personalities bigger than him on his own show. Like, because if, if I were to uncage Richard Sherman, Keyshawn Johnson, and Michael Irvin trying to make a statement in front of the lights on any unsuspecting host throughout the history of time, they would all have trouble containing whatever that became. 
But the word unsuspecting is the word that was circling my brain as I was listening to Mina basically say that she's pulling punches because she knows there are some things that she shouldn't say because it would be to render the host of the show unsuspecting. I would actually say it's not that I'm pulling punches in terms of the content of what I say, but the way that I say it. Now, granted, mm. I don't think it's in my nature to talk aggressively. <laughs> well, that, that's why you over stink. People. But that's why you stink at the take. That you've stunk yeah. at the take since you got here. I've gotten better. Okay. <laughs> no, but no, but you got to be obnoxious. It's got to have a condescension and an arrogance in it. It has to be something that has an affect that is rude. Yeah. Like it's obnoxious. It has to. It, it has to sound a little more like this. Mm. So you went to corner mm. because oh, it was well. much easier to well, do. You ain't got to catch up, Bobby. Well, you ain't got to catch up, Bobby. All you, you got to do is run with somebody. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Just that I grunt. Know, because people love JJ on first take, and he has positioned himself, I think, very successfully as love the JJ. reasonable one. I'm Here I am. I'm going to do my reasonable take. I'm not going to sound aggressive or condescending or talk over people. And I, when, when I watch those clips, which, by the way, Stephen A. loves, too. Stephen A., like, there, there's a, there is a bit of an egolessness, I think, to the way that show is produced that's different from Skip being crowded out, out of his own show. Um, I find that to be really good television. And I think a lot of people do. I think it really works. Oh, but it's I think rare, that works but it, but it's better also, than But this. it's also rare, Mina, because it stands out, at least in part, because, oh, look, J.J. Reddick is a lot smarter than most of the people who are talking around him and the points that he's making. More informed. He sounds more informed. Like, J.J. Reddick keeps going viral, at least in part, because he sounds super smart. Well, that's, what a, that's, that's where I see this through. That lens is... The attention of this, the virality of it, the attention economy of what it means to be good at anything. Because when you get a clip, and I want to play one more clip here, the clip where Skip Bayless kind of forlornly has to just acknowledge that he doesn't even have the oxygen on his own show to be Skip Bayless. <laughs> Here's my problem. All year long, they did not have a closer. I don't know how closely you watch their games, but I can. We don't have time because you guys talk too much, and so I, I can't. I've run out of time. Here. I know you just didn't say we talk. I, I too did. Yes, yeah, you talk too much. Just like <laughs> that part. That part is funny, and it goes viral in part because it feels like Skip Bayless is not in on this. Right? Like what we're watching, let's just cut to the core of this. What we like is that Skip Bayless is being drowned out as the ultimate sports TV villain, even more than Stephen A has ever been, by the way. Skip Bayless embodies that for all these reasons. He cannot win on his own show. He has stepped onto a giant rake shaped like Michael Irvin and Richard Sherman and Keyshawn Johnson. That's why this is going viral. And that's why I am snorting all of it. It's it's funny for that specific reason. Mina, can we answer the question that you're asking, though? Because when you say, is it good television and is bad television good television, ratings do dictate all of that. Ratings are the ultimate decider on something like this. And the modern, occur the modern currency, whether you're 70 or on TikTok is attention. And all of these clips that Pablo just played, millions of views, which these shows do not have when they're on television. Not, not hundreds of thousands, millions of views just because it's messy and that's good for Skip Bayless, is it not? Like whether, whether he's happy about it is a different question, but of course that's good television. Certainly television that Fox and ESPN will take at every turn, will they not? Because it's money, it's just numbers. Uh, so Skip was the trend, number one trending topic on Twitter when this started, whenever the new lineup debuted. Um, you're right, those clips went viral. I think the, he is undoubtedly a short-term winner because attention in our industry is absolutely a barometer of success. But whether it's sustainable will determine whether or not this is actually successful. I mean, first of all, you know, I, not to be like a industry analyst, but like Shannon Sharp hasn't made his debut on first take, right? And we and and I think Pablo's point um, was really astute, which is these these all went viral not because of the content of what people were saying or because people enjoyed it, but because everybody loved watching Skip be humiliated 
or whatever. Yeah, but that Floyd was. Mayweather is one of the great businessmen of our time just because people would tune in to watch him get knocked out. Like, I can't believe that there is an evolution for Skip Bayless at the age of 70 in a game this competitive. But if he's willing to accept, all right, I'll be the fool. That's a great evolution. I just don't think he would ever accept that. It feels short-term to me. I feel like if they're to have any success, you'd have to have, you know, like Richard Sherman break out as a voice that people want to hear or more, like, interesting debates. That particular dynamic that you are both rev literally reveling in, that doesn't feel like something people that is going to go viral every week and get that kind of attention. It felt like a, like, this is novel. Have you not We're watched Michael guy Irvin cast on in a television? Role he never you, plays. Don't, you don't think Michael Irvin on television, who multiple times I have thought to myself, I don't know if this is cocaine, but there is cocaine in his past that <laughs> wouldn't make it an unreasonable leap to say this person behaving at this rate of speed is really amped up and always, I think, Mina, always good television. I don't think. Yeah. I, I think. But th I think that Michael Irvin's better at television than all three of us. Well, he's great at television. <laughs> you, but Dan, you covered Michael Irvin. Like on some level, did you foresee? I want to ask you this question because you had a front. Yes, it was, front row it was obvious when he was 18. He was the most charismatic player on all of those University of Miami teams that ended up having a personality type that uh, the country embraced because it was loud, obnoxious, fun, ridiculous. Let's just be very honest about what's happening. Michael Irvin has been plugged in to like every conceivable talk show format because someone out there is like, we need him to make this sound at us. Mm. So you went to corner mm. because oh, it was yeah. much easier. The excerpts from that show sound like when you play like Pink Floyd backwards looking for signs for the devil or something. <laughs> like, you know, it whatever. is. It is absolutely what echoes and sounds like the sound made by something crawling the walls of hell. Absolutely. <laughs> You don't think it's sustainable. That's what it is that you're arguing. What? I don't think there. What well, I don't think that's going to continue getting this level of attention. They have to do other things. I do not underestimate these gentlemen's ability to find other ways to get attention, though, Dan. So I just, I just meant that particular dynamic. It, it's, it's, it's like watching, you know, a, a like a dog walk on its legs. You're like, whoa, haven't seen that before. That's what it felt like watching Skip Bayless be quiet. It's back legs, you meant, right? Because all I've seen is dogs <laughs> walk on their legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm noticing a through line here. We're talking about uh, people losing things, but maybe getting better in the process. That feels like the theme of today's show. I feel like I found some poetry there, Dan. So what did you learn? What did you find out today on Pablo Torre Finds Out? I found out that when three people have worked together for a long time, they can hit exactly the perfect musical notes, never talking over each other because they have chemistry, having discourse that can be a symphony as long as three parts, ingredients that have worked together before are graceful, unlike what it is that Undisputed was doing, where everybody was talking over each other and the host of the show couldn't get a word in edgewise. I am arguing Undisputed style that what we're doing around here has more chemistry than the average podcast. I thought you were going to set me up first, Pablo, so that you could end the show with Dan. I don't understand. I don't know. Sorry. That's the kind of I chemistry I'm talking about right there, Pablo. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. No, no one has we ever are seen. not going to end on a failed bit. <laughs> I was, I was, I, th I thought I was setting up Dan I, for Mina I to interrupt. Like on a show where we're judging another show for yelling over all of that. That's stuff. the no, kind uh, of content that I'm talking about. about. This show would never be watched all talking at the same time. That's we not something that would happen here. And not if Metal Lot and Media would pay Pablo all that money for those right magical right 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 professional right right segues right that he does. Because I care about production. Both of you. <laughs> <laughs>